And this is about billboards that, now see, here's what irritates me. People that don't believe anything, say they don't believe anything, should have the decency to leave us alone that, that do believe and uh, not try to discredit everything that we do. But yeah, they're, they're, so, they're so used by the devil, and that's exactly what they are. They're not innocent people by, by any stretch of the imagination. They're, uh, they're so being used of the devil that, that not only do they not believe themselves, but they want to encourage others not to believe. And it's, it's, it's the sad day that we live in when we come to this point. But here's billboards that are going up. This is uh, in Detroit uh, by the De Detroit Free Press. Who needs religion? Uh, that's the question being raised by a group of secular activists that has put up billboards in Michigan containing photos of smiling people that read millions of Americans are living happily without religion. Amen. That's what they're saying. Happily without religion. Now, I don't have religion. I've got salvation. Amen. I do. That's what I've got. And I know a lot of religious people that ain't happy, but I'm happy. And uh, I wouldn't be happy without the Lord. But it goes on to say, those might be provocative words for the devout, but the Center for Inquiry, a New York-based group that also put up the billboards in Indiana, New York, and Washington, D.C., uh, says it's living without religion campaign will resonate with growing numbers of Americans. It points to surveys that show an increasing percentage of people in the U.S. don't identify with any religion. Uh, we want to let non-religious people in our communities know that they're not alone, said Jennifer Behan, the assistant director of the Center for Inquiries Michigan chapter. Uh, they are among millions of Americans living happily, purposely, purposeful lives without religion. Behan, 25 of Grand Rapids, was raised, listen to this, was raised as a conservative Christian ba First Baptist and then Calvinist, trained to believe that every word of the Bible was true, but the more she read, she said she found errors and contradictions that didn't make sense. <laughs> Around eight, that's what you do when you give a lost person the word of God and expect them to try to understand it. And I'll just tell you exactly what that is. She's lost. Around age 20, she realized I'm not comfortable believing this stuff anymore, right where the devil would have her to be. I wanted to find a community where I could ask questions without uh, being told we're going to hell for not believing. Hassan Khalifa, 25, of Detroit, used to be a devout Muslim, but also has given up his faith. I was actually extremely religious, he said, but at 17, Khalifa started reading more science and philosophy and felt that Islam wasn't for him. Now he's a student organizer at a secular students group at Wayne State University. And such as our nation goes, it's sad, friend, it's sad in the day. Uh, when, you know, uh, okay, so they don't believe. Uh, you know, but why bother with trying to convince everybody else? And see, it's a, it's a that itself becomes a, a form of religion to them when they try to stop everybody else from, you know, from uh, believing or try to keep people from believing or try to convince people that it's all right not to believe. And so such is the world we live in today, but such is the day when Jesus will come. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, then I'll bring you some, uh, some uh, uh, reading and preaching out of the book of the Revelation. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege to gather tonight. God, so much for your blessings upon us god we're grateful and lord we thank you lord for this church and these people lord that meet together and we come together again tonight to worship you lord around the word of god help us i pray to rightly divide the word of truth and god we pray for our nation it is in a a, a terrible mess god well, i've never i've never in the history of this nation uh, known anyone that says we're are any better off than or any worse off god we're we're in terrible shape as a nation and God, all I can ask you to do is, God, have your will. And Lord, if you don't touch us, Lord, uh, God, if the gospel message doesn't stir, and Father, we know we have already gone so far back, Lord, that unless you move upon us, God, then we'll never get back to you. And Lord, a sad day it is. But God, we thank you, Lord, for salvation. And Lord, for that few that will put all the world aside. And God, put all the... Uh, business of this world aside but, and decide they're going to follow you no matter what takes place. And God, we can only pray for those that are so blinded and so darkened that they cannot see the light. 
And pray, Father, that somehow you'll sign the light of the gospel on in their hearts that they might come to know you. Help us tonight as we study. God, help us to rightly divide the word of truth. Bless us together in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody got a word on your heart tonight now before we begin our study? Anyone? <clears throat> All right, Revelation chapter number 8. And then, now, I'll just be honest with you tonight. This is not going to be very long. Uh, because this scripture tonight, we just uh, got out of chapter number 7 where uh, we considered the 144,000 that were uh, sealed to, to uh, preach the message, the gospel in that day. And those were sealed by God and nothing could harm them. God protected them, put the seal uh, in their forehead that they should not be hurt. And so they go wor the world over preaching to those that have never heard. Uh, by means of, of the power of God. Uh, the church has had, you know, hundreds of years to proclaim the gospel, and the church has not proclaimed the gospel to the whole world. And that used to bother me. That used to uh, concern me that, you know, uh, the, everybody in the world does not, have to, does, does not have to hear this gospel that we preach today before the rapture. Uh, it doesn't have to be so because in the tribulation period, God is going to call that 144,000 uh, that are going to preach to every ear, every here and ear by the power of the word of God and by the, and the, by the power uh, of the gospel and the power of God. They're going, they're going to, uh, everybody's going to hear and have opportunity because God's a long-suffering God. And, and so when someone asks you, what about those that are, have never heard the gospel, will they still have a chance after the rapture? They will. Uh, but they, they'll hear it by the preaching of the 144,000. And so everyone's going to have opportunity. Nobody's going to be without, uh, you know, without opportunity to get right with God. And so as we studied that on last, on last Wednesday night, about the 144,000 that were sealed, that all takes place during the, during the tribulation. And that was a parenthetical chapter between the sixth and the seventh seals of the little book that was opened and by the Lamb of God that opened the book. Now, in chapter number 8, it resumes the opening of the seals, this last seal that is to be opened. And from that last seal comes seven trumpets, and there come some woes, and there come seven vials of the wrath of God. All, is, all of it is made up of sevens, and it all, it all uh, uh, coincides one with the other. And friend, I'm telling you, what we're fixing to preach on for the next a uh, few studies in Revelation is going to be horrendous. And uh, if you don't believe the word of God, then you'll, you know, you'll not believe any of this, but you must believe the word of God. Uh, you must believe what it says and for, for what it is, and we believe it to be the truth. And I'd be, you know, I'd be crazy to stand up here and try to uh, make everything figurative that we're going to read to you about tonight and, to, and for the weeks to come because it's not. It's not symbolic. It's not figurative because it doesn't speak of as being figurative. It is literal. And uh, many times I've said, even during this uh, uh, session with Revelation, that you take the word of God literally unless it is presented as a type or as a figure. You take it literally. And so in chapter number 8, verse number 1, we'll begin here. And I'm, I'm just basically, it's, it basically preaches itself because it's, uh, it's simple to be understood. And... The opening of the eighth seal. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. Now you think about this in a moment. From, from the beginning of whenever we could ever think of eternity past, uh, there has been noise in heaven. There has been praising God around his throne. Uh, there has been worship and there has been adoration of God the Father. And uh, many sounds going on, and many, you know, many musical things going on in heaven. But here in chapter number 8, in verse number 1, we find, uh, as far as I can tell, the only mention of silence in heaven. And it's not just a moment of silence. It is a period of silence for a half hour. Now, how many have ever been where it's deathly quiet? I mean, you can't hear anything. I mean, so far back in the woods... That, that you can't hear anything. Now, it's very hard to get. Now, I've been, you know, I've been back, in, uh, back in the mountains so far that you know, even if the, if the birds weren't chirping, it is deathly quiet. And I've been where there wasn't no squirrels, nothing. And it's, it's about deafening almost because it's so quiet. 
Well, around here you don't hear that. I heard coming in the door cow bellering down there, so it's definitely, you know, not quiet. You hear cars running on the interstate. You can hear horns blowing, and it's not quiet. And, you know, when you get away from that, it's, it's almost troubling when you get to a quiet place like that because you're not used to all of that. Well, can you imagine in heaven for the space of a half hour, 30 minutes, that there is total silence in heaven. There was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. Now, why? Why would the, you know, why would the, the silence be in heaven? Why would it get quiet like that in heaven? Because the, the angel here that is opening up this seventh seal, they know it's something. They know it's something great. They know it's going to be something uh, terrific. They, they know there's something going to happen here. So they're in awe of what is about to take place. So they stand in silence while this seal is open. And so as they stand for the space of a half hour, awaiting and anticipating what's going to be in this, you know, now, uh, is there knowledge maybe beforehand of what's going to take place? I don't know. But I know they're waiting for something because they know something is about to take place when this seventh seal of this book is open. So the book is open at verse number two. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. So here's another angel, and, and many believe, and I do also, that this angel is, is uh, nothing more or, or nothing greater than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And we find the Lord Jesus portrayed as an angel many times throughout, uh, throughout the Bible. In the Old Testament, you find what we call Christophanies, or an Old Testament appearance of Christ. You find that uh, in the Word of God, and you can look, and I can show you places where he Christ has appeared uh, in the form of an angelic form. Uh, and so here we find out that this, this other angel stands and he has in his hand a, a golden censer and there was given to him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was for the throne. So, God, so, uh, so this angel, the Lord Jesus, is offering up sin, incense before the Father uh, a, a wonderful aroma before the Father and prayers of all the tribulation saints that have prayed for their, uh, you know, for that, that God would avenge them and that God would uh, quickly do something about the condition, those, you know, the, of those that are, that are there. And, and so the, much vengeance is gone on anyway but because there has been uh, much catastrophe upon the earth. So those prayers of all those, all those tribulation saints are before the Lord and the incense is before God. And verse 4, And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Now the, the censer is empty. That golden censer is now empty and look what he does. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire off the altar and cast it into the earth, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and earthquakes, and the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now this is before the, uh, this is the seventh seal being opened. This is what the other angel does. He casts that censer, or he gets that censer under the altar, and he pulls out of there a uh, fire from the altar, and he casts that to the earth. Now listen, uh, this is literal. He casts that to the earth. And as it, as it goes, it is filled with fire of the altar, cast it into the earth, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and earthquake. Now all of this is what's going to happen when the other angel cast that censer full of fire to the earth. You know, preacher, that is too far-fetched for me to believe. Well, I'm sorry, friend, if you feel that way, but it's absolutely the Word of God. And we believe that is the Word. I believe that's going to happen. We've never seen anything like that happen before. We've never, we've never experienced like anything like that before. But those left on planet Earth, when the tribulation takes place, when this, uh, when this uh, other angel casts that censer of fire upon the Earth, it's going to be just what it says, thunderings and lightnings and voices and earthquakes. And so that must be a terrifying thing to experience, but that is only mild compared to what's about to happen on this Earth. Now listen. 
<clears throat> so the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. There they stand, waiting to sound the trumpet. The first angel sounded, and there followed. Now listen, this is literal. you got to believe the word of God. This is literal. He sounded the trumpet, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. Now, friend, that's a horrific. Can you imagine that? You're standing out, and listen, around here, what you see, the mountains you see, the people you see, if they're not saved, if they're lost without God, this is the very thing that soon is going to happen. Now, I'll be called a heretic, and I'll be called... Uh, foolish and I'll be called you know some kind of nut for preaching these things but it's the word of God and 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 like I say I believe this because it's the word of God it doesn't say in the word of God here that it's going to be likened to here's what it says again I read to you hell we know what that is fire mingled with blood it doesn't say fire mingled with substance that is blood or 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 the appearance of fire and the appearance of blood it says fire mingled with blood. Now, why should I doubt that? Why should I dispute that? Why should I try to spiritualize that very thing when the Word of God says definitely what it's going to be? So hell and fire mingled with blood. Uh, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up. Can you imagine the third part of the trees being burnt? All over this world, the third part of the trees are burnt. Man, that that have been awful sight. That have been a terrible sight. And the green, all the green grass was burnt up. Now you know how it, how hot it has to get for green grass to burn. It has to get hot. Now you set one of these hay fields on fire when they're dead. You know, and man, they burn like one thing. And I've often, you know, if, if I wasn't saved, I'd be an arsonist. I've always said that. If I wasn't, if I wasn't born again in the grace of God, I'd be an arsonist because I'll I'd, I'd drive by. My wife, we drove down the side of the interstate today, and she looked at some stuff up there on the, on the bank, and she said, I like that stuff. That's pretty. I think it's this big, tall, grassy stuff that everybody hates around here. But she said, I think that looks pretty. And I'm thinking, boy, that burned good. I mean, that's just me. But it's dry, and, it, you know, it, it would... Uh, it would it's, it's uh, you know it'd be easy to burn. But green grass. Now I've never looked at a green field out there like out there and think, man, that burned good. No, I know that ain't going to burn. But can you imagine it getting hot enough for that green grass to burn? And friend, that's what is going to take place during the tribulation period. Now the second angel, verse number eight, and the second angel sounded as it were a great. Listen now, as it not a great mountain. Here's where we find something that is, that is uh, a comparison. And it, the second angel sounded, and, and as it were a great mountain, as it were a great mountain burning with fire, was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Now, what does that mean, preacher? It said, it said, as it were, a great mountain. It doesn't say a great mountain. Now, if it said a great mountain, I'd believe exactly that. That's exactly what I believe. If it was a great mountain was cast into the, into the sea. Not the seas, but the sea. Now, what, what is this? What ex explanation can be given here? Well, God is already through stars from the heaven. And this certainly looks to me like this could be a, a great meteorite or a great meteor storm that hits the earth. Now, is that what it is? It's like a great mountain. Now, there have been enough movies on television where you've seen stories about asteroids to, to get that picture in your brain. That may be a bad way to explain it, but if a great asteroid or as big as a mountain were to hit, then that's what, that's what this, I believe, is trying to say to us. It doesn't say a great mountain. It said as it were a great mountain. The only thing I can think of out here, out around about us is some of these uh, asteroids that they say fly close enough to the earth that one of them could hit one day. Well, Looky here. It's already said one of them could hit one of these days. Well, this is probably uh, most likely what this is, a great asteroid that, that hits uh, the earth and uh, the third part of, or hits the sea, and the third part of this sea became blood. What sea are we talking about? Now, most of this is taking place in Israel over, over in the Middle East, so probably 
and I don't I can't be dogmatic. I can't say I definitely know this is so, but because it doesn't say the seas, I can only uh, you know I can only suggest uh, and and uh, that it is the Mediterranean Sea. So if such as that were to hit the Mediterranean Sea as a great mountain falling into the Mediterranean Sea, a third part of it becomes blood. Doesn't come like it was blood. Doesn't turn red as blood. It says it becomes blood. Now he's I can't believe that preacher. Well, then you have to go back to the uh, you know you have to go back to the. Uh, the book of Exodus and, and see many times where, you remember when God turned the Nile River into blood? Uh, it wasn't like blood, he turned it in. If he can turn the Nile River into blood, friend, he can, he can also uh, turn a third part of the sea into blood. And I believe that exactly to be what it says. It's exactly what it says and that's what I believe. And the per third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Now, how does all that happen? Well, you imagine something as big as a mountain crashing into the sea, and you imagine what a what a wave that must cause, and what a you know what a what a uh, tsunami that must cause, and that would destroy a third part of the ships uh, that were on the sea, and that would also cause a third of the life to die. So this is nothing, you know. This is nothing that is. Uh, way out there somewhere, friend. It's just what the Word of God says, and it's what I believe, and I believe that's exactly what's going to happen. When that second angel uh, blows that trumpet, here's what's going to happen. Now listen, this is all taking place. And, what, and, and who is mere men to be here on this earth and experiencing all of this, and yet they will not believe God? And they don't, you know, it'll all be, there will be someone trying to explain it all the way uh, when all this is taking place. Uh, the third trumpet and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water and the name of the star is called wormwood and wormwood is a, is a bitter herb. It's called wormwood and the third part of the waters became wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. That's another strange phenomenon that is coming. And again, what does it say? A great star fell from heaven. Now, what is that? It's a great star that fell from heaven. And that's what happens. It, 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 it comes to planet Earth, and when it hits planet Earth also, then it causes the third part of the waters to become wormwood or bitter, and men drink it and die. Oh, my friend, I'm glad I'm not going to be here. That is the... You know, that is one thing that I'm sure of, that when all this takes place, because I'm a child of God, I'm not going to be here when that happens. <clears throat> so, uh, chapter, verse number 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise, even the, even the light and darkness is, is going to be so contorted that, you know, that, we're, that only a, a third of that's going to, you know, two-thirds of that's only is what's going to exist. Now, can you imagine such a time? You're talking about a fearful time. Uh, how many of you have ever seen the eclipse of the sun or the eclipse of the moon? Most of you. You know, you know, to me, now I know it's a natural phenomenon that happens when the planets do whatever they're doing and one shadow comes across the other, and I've never understood all that, but I know how it takes place. But when all that happens, when you're outside looking at that, you know, it kind of feels eerie, doesn't it? It's kind of a strange feeling, or to me it is. Maybe I'm the only one in here that feels that way. But, but to see that happen, it's kind of a strange feeling to see all that happen. Well, guess what? how strange is it going to be and how terrifying is it going to be when... Uh, when that third part of the sun is smitten and the third part of the moon is smitten and the third part of the stars, uh, so as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise. Uh, man, that's going to be a terrifying thing. Besides all the turmoil with the other elements that have, and the other things that have gone on in the fire and the hell and the uh, fire mingled with blood and, and the, you know, the ships that a third of them are gone and and a third part of the sea is gone. And oh, what a terrible, what a horrific time that's going to be. Not terrific, but horrific. A terrible time that's going to be on earth. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with, 
with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Now I'm going to stop here because uh, this other is going to take some time to deal with and that's as far as we're going tonight. But listen what, listen what that angel flying through, the, flying through the midst of the heaven saying, Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a, it's a sound of, of uh, stop and listen. Uh, be more terrified because of the reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Now three angels have left. Seven angels, we've, we've heard their trumpet call already and we've seen it in the book of Revelation. We believe it. But these other three are give, going to be, that sounds bad enough. I'm glad I'm not going to be here, friend. But these other three, and you read on, and you read it, and you take it for what it is, and friend, it is a disaster, a catastrophe of unimaginable. You just have to let your thoughts and your mind run with what you see and what you hear. And what you imagine is going to happen by the Word of God is exactly what's going to happen. And I can continue on here, but I want to take a little more time maybe uh, with these others. So I'm going to stop here tonight with chapter number 8. I don't want to cover any more than that tonight. But friend, I'm glad. If you're a child of God, you should get ready. People, when people begin to ask questions, you'll have some answers for them now. Uh, you just take them to the book. Listen, you take them to the book of Revelation. If they ask you a question about it, you take them out and just let them read it. So there it is. That's what's going to happen. But what does all this mean? It means exactly what it says. What does it mean when hell uh, mingled with blood falls from sky? Exactly what it means. Can you imagine being standing outside and great chunks of, rock, of hell, of ice come flying down from heavens and mingled with blood, raining? I've been out in hail storms before. And I'm being, I've been out in the woods in some terrible hail storms and it pouring the rain at the same time. Now, that's no fun. You know, hell about the size of a you know, marble or something like that beating your ears off if you ain't under a tree. And you're trying to get away from it. And pouring the rain, getting soaking wet. But can you imagine hail stones, uh, great huge hail stones falling and instead of rain coming down with it, blood? Oh my, a terrible day is coming upon planet Earth. This is all going to happen as we read it, the rest of it to you and study the rest of it, this is all going to happen in a period of seven years. And then when it's all over with, God's going to come back. The one that, that, uh, that sends all of this upon the earth because the Spirit of God has been lifted, God that sends all of this uh, upon the earth is going to come back and straighten it all out. He's going to draw it all back together and set up His kingdom here upon this earth to reign for a thousand years. And guess who's going to be with Him? Amen. You're going to be with him because you're saved in the grace of God. So, friend, you look around at the things in the world today, people fighting religion and people fighting God, and it's already begun. People, you know, people uh, denying the existence of God and, and uh, people trying to rule the earth. And, and uh, many, the Bible says many antichrists are coming to the world, and there's many about that deny God. But guess what? You're looking at one that's not going to deny God. Amen, I believe in the Word of God and what it says. So stay faithful, stay true to God. And as we continue on through the book of Revelation, remember, it is what it says it is. And we believe it for what it says. Father, we thank you for the Word of God tonight. And Lord, I pray, God, that you let us take it into our hearts, God, and believe it. Lord, we've studied it, and we see no other, uh, no other way to take it, God, except that it is exactly what you say in your Word. And so, Father, we pray tonight, God, that you'd help us, Lord, to live our days Father, that we might warn the...